Got an exam question walkthrough here for structure and bonding. The question looks at dot and cross diagram for an ionic compound, structure and bonding properties, electron configuration, and the derivation of an unfamiliar chemical equation from supplied information. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to leave a comment to suggest a future topic, please do so. Okay, so here's the question. It's on three slides, so as usual, I'll click through the slides, you pause the video, have a go at the questions, and then play on for the answers. So part A, dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in sodium sulfide. We're told it's ionic, but sometimes they don't always tell you. So if it's a metal and a non-metal, it's going to be ionic. So we're going to need square brackets, charges outside, and so on. So here it is. So we've got two separate sodium ions drawn. The um, diagram doesn't show any outer electrons. That's absolutely fine. If you have shown the outer electrons, you'd need to have eight electrons in each of these. And because this diagram I've used here is using um, the crosses for the sodium electrons, then obviously you would need to have crosses in there. And obviously you could flip the signs around, so you could have two um, circles and six crosses. So moving on to part B, we've got to complete this table. So before I've answered the question, I've just written up across the top here what kind of bonding we've got. So sodium sulfide we already know is ionic. Sodium is a metal, so it's got metallic bonding, and sulfur is covalent. So in terms of type of structure, we've only got two options, giant or simple. Well, all ionic compounds have a giant ionic lattice structure. So giant is obviously the answer there. Metals also all form giant metallic lattices. And covalent is the only tricky one because it could be um, simple or giant. Sulfur is a simple covalent molecule. So it's just things like boron and carbon and silicon that would need the giant um, structure there. Electrical conductivity, again, we've only got two options, good or poor. So ionic compounds, remember when they're in the solid state, don't conduct electricity. The ions can't move, so it's poor. But when you melt them, the ions are mobile, and so it becomes good. Metals can conduct in both solid and liquid state, so you'd need good twice for that and covalent substances don't conduct electricity and finally part c so the first thing you've got to do is write the electron configuration in full for a selenium atom so because it's an atom it hasn't lost or gained any electrons so just go to your periodic table look at how many um, protons it's got it's got the same number of electrons so 34 and then the uh, paper has given you the starting point. So first subshell to fill is 1s, and then so that's 1s2. And then you just pick it up from there. Two ways to show it. You can either do it this way, which is the order of um, subshell filling. So you can see 3p6, then 4s2, then 3d10. Obviously finishes off 4p4. Or you could do it this way which um, just groups all the subshells together in terms of which energy levels they're in. So either way here is fine. So for the final part of the question, we've got to use this information to come up with the identity of gas B and the equation. We don't have to explain anything. I'm going to sort of give you sort of the logic to where it's come, the answer's coming from, but you don't have to for the purpose of the exam. So first thing is, we'll be using this information. Selenium's in the same group of the periodic table of sulfur. Obviously, we didn't need to be told that. It's what the periodic table tells us that anyway. Um, so sodium selenide is going to have the same sort of type of formula as sodium sulfide, which the question started off talking about. So the first thing I'm going to do is begin the equation. So it's Na2Se plus HCl. We're then told... Um, this gas B is a toxic gas. So the fact that it's a gas, it must be a simple covalent molecule, low boiling point. So therefore it's going to be made from non-metals. So basically we're ruling out sodium in the formula. So we're left with hydrogen, selenium and chlorine. So if we focus on selenium, that's in group 6. We already know about H2O, H2S. 
So H2SE is the formula of the hydride of selenium. So could that be it? Check out its MR, it's 81. So yep, that's the one. So gas B is H2SE. So we can finish off the equation now. So we're going to get H2SE and the leftover atoms are sodium and chlorine. So obviously the likely thing there is sodium chloride. And we just need to balance it now with twos in front of the HCl and the NaCl.